I want to talk about how you actually write research findings for a paper. So the key thing to remember is that you are telling a story within this paper and that's a really hard thing to think about. So I'm going to encourage you to use ChatGPT and use all of the available resources that are, are there, including the reciprocity platform, whatever you need. But what you need to do is think about how you can tell a story so that you can communicate your message. A lot of people don't realize this, but science is about storytelling. And so what you're thinking about is how the results that I have actually fit in with the greater story that I'm telling within the paper. Now, there's a couple of things that I want you to really worry about when you're thinking about the storytelling within the research findings. I want you to think about presenting the data so it's easy to see and easy to understand. And so it should be very sequential in how you're presenting this information from the, the, the sort of first, you know, first insight, the first hypothesis that you think is the most important to the thing that is less important. And these are kind of robustness findings. So you want the core at the very beginning and to be very short. In most research papers, it's no more than a couple of pages, two pages. If it's in a journal like Science, it's more like two paragraphs, three paragraphs, very, very short. And you're presenting this information so that people can understand it. Use really short sentences. Sometimes you want a long sentence, but that gets confusing. So make sure that you're trying to condense things and make it as easy as possible. Now, when you're presenting, I don't like to present a great deal of data within the research findings. I don't think a lot of people do as well. And how you present data, if you're going to do that, is you um, present them as kind of a artifact or a secondary thing, right? So what you'll have to do is write everything, have a great deal of information up front, and then sometimes what you'll do is you'll put a graph and you'll say, refer to this figure, and then you explain what the figure is trying to sell and try, trying to say and what it's trying to do and why it actually matters for the thing that you're you're trying to actually explain and really get into what it is you're trying to communicate that message that you're trying to communicate now there's a, a trick that i've been learning to use is to summarize in summary tables what the research findings were after the fact. Now it's kind of hard to figure out where to put that, whether to put that in the results section or to put that in the conclusions. But thinking about how you can summarize what you're doing, what is the effect? What is the effect size of the thing that you're actually looking at? Does it hold? Are these supported? So having a nice little clear table, I think it's very useful for people to see what these results are. So that's the key things to think about is the first one is to present it as a story. It's always a storytelling thing. There's always a narrative and what we say is a narrative, but a story so that you can understand it and people will be excited about what you're trying to do. If you just present information, nobody cares. Um, the second thing is present data in a very logical and easy way to understand. And maybe it's a figure or something along those lines, but don't pre present a whole great a bunch of data. Nobody cares about data. They really don't. Um, it seems really counterintuitive to say that, but if you have too much data in there, people are going to get overwhelmed and they're not going to actually like this research paper. And then the last thing is to think about how you can present your research in or a summary of your research so it's easy for people to see. Maybe it's, it's really searchable so that people can search for this stuff later on on the internet, right? Like the searchability, thinking about the behavior of how people are gonna interact with it later on is a super important part to think about a research paper. So you wanna make sure it's super clear, it's interactable, um, the search engines can find this stuff. It's going to be able to pop up. It's going to be able to, to go into all of the, you know, the artificial intelligence stuff that people can understand and it's going to become part of it. So it becomes part of the conversation in the future. And that's where you think about this narrative part 
and presenting the data in a very simple way, presenting you know nice summary tables. What you're doing is you're thinking about your future impact so people can understand what you're trying to do. The last thing that you actually want to do is to do all of this amazing work that is so difficult and not have it done in a very presentable way so that people can understand and people can um, eventually recognize you for the work that you're actually trying to do. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.